Terry, welcome to ODS in India. Pleasure to have you here. Now, you're giving a, a talk. Can you tell us more about what you're talking on this morning? Uh, so we're going to be talking about, so I am CEO of DeepKafa.ai. So uh, we're going to be talking about the importance of research in deep learning and how do you take the fundamentals of research of deep learning into and applying it into the industries. So the talk is tomorrow, by the way, and I did give a workshop yesterday, a whole full day workshop on the right. same topic. Yeah. And how did the audience receive that? Like, how did you find the audience? So I was actually really impressed. I mean, uh, when uh, we, we went into this workshop, you know, you tend to go with the script and you want to, you know, teach the students and you have a student community. And here we had uh, people from various backgrounds, disciplines. Uh, there were, you know, professors and researchers and people with great academic background and, and, you know, people also from business domains. So in fact, I kind of really adapted my workshop immediately by when I asked these people what they wanted from the workshop into uh, into a couple of sections and was trying to satisfy the audience. So demanding but extremely well-informed audience. I was blown away and, you know, I, we, we barely had lunch, but I mean, we were super excited. Well, of course, because um, deep learning research is such a hot area. Can you tell us a little bit about some of the uh, areas you think are very exciting in deep learning at the moment? So right now, I think uh, you've seen, you know, computer vision and all this, you know, face recognition and a lot of things which, uh, uh, you know, requires computers and the machines to be able to see uh, and, and make predictions and probably also inferences of what is happening are, are the areas we're working on already. Uh, where we are also cooking, as we say, you know, in our labs and in our kitchen, in our algorithms and even a couple of really improvements in deep learning algorithms, where we believe that we can improve these algorithms. So we work with OpenAI, we, are, we, have our, you know, we also have good relations with Google and a bunch of other top researchers are uh, joining our firm. So what we're trying to do is actually improve uh, uh, deep learning uh, from, from a research perspective and try to create a robust kind of a framework that is flexible, you know, automated, and can you know adapt to your needs. So I think that's kind of a high-level uh, description. Right. Tomorrow in my talk, I will give a kind of a deep dive, a deep dive uh, description into what exactly this is and how do you really apply it and, and take it to the industry. We believe that taking research to the industry is the only way this industry is going to expand. We do are we are concerned a little bit that research in itself becomes a great sort of a self-congratulatory kind of an exercise, and taking it into the industry is where you really see the benefits and the fruits of, of uh, you know the, the labor. That's very interesting. Um, yeah, because deep learning, as I said, very hot at the moment, but a lot of great work been doing in computer vision, uh, sp speech uh, recognition, text translation. Um, but do you see other areas of industry that can avail of deep learning models? outside of those those couple I mentioned? So uh, obviously, I think we could probably turn the question around and say, uh, can these technologies, whether it's text, audio, or video, and, and obviously images and stills and pictures that you see on internet, uh, can we apply these uh, algorithms and technologies into different industry domains? So I think, uh, first of all, I think the combination of these few disciplines, so you have computer vision uh, based on audio, video, text, data, and all the, these need to be combined. And you know, kind of make some meaningful conversation, meaningful kind of understanding of, of a scene. Uh, for instance, you know, the gentleman before me just uh, kind of described about vehicles in front of uh, um, a shopping mall. You could kind of make several correlations in, in about how to you know, take this into the industry and eventually put it into a different industry like agriculture, Farming, marine engineering. We we signed an MOU. I was uh, mentoring a bunch of startups in in London last week uh, uh, with the Hull for, uh, Foundation. I don't know if you've heard of that. And so you know, it's, it's Foundation Rebel Clinton. Where we're going to be meeting him next month as well in New York. Where you know, you give a seed funding to of a million dollars to a startup, and they were from all industries, farming, wind energy. And so we are kind of pulling those guys in and saying, how can we you know expand research? which is being today applied just into face recognition, you know, you need to move it to different areas and do soil recognition, seaweed uh, sort of farming, uh, and, and try to understand, you know, various scientific components of water, salinity, and what else can we do. So I think you need to expand this into various areas. Yeah, it's very insightful and um, so many possibilities there. 
So people looking to uh, use deep learning in their in their work, um, what are some of the tools you recommend? You said you're working on a platform yourself, but what are some of the most popular tools out there at the moment that are, um, people are using? So I think, you know, kind of to sum it up our, our conversation, uh, we are uh, we, we're bringing in a bunch of tools, uh, and actually also our own tools, but you should look at TensorFlow and, and even PyTorch. TensorFlow is from Google, PyTorch, you know, Facebook, the research is really focused on improving PyTorch. But also take a look at you know Chainer and a couple of other things. Matconnet is used as well in, in in many areas in industrial areas. People don't talk about it, and and you know using kind of you know just Python is a great language, but you know people should learn also C plus plus again. Exactly. It's a bit of a hurdle, but you know application of, of of language that compiles at hardware level at a device level is something you need when you're you know driving an autonomous car or you're doing other uh, applications. So I think it's important to understand the fundamental of using you know, languages that really find their way into devices and, and material sciences of everything that we are seeing today. And, and then eventually using these libraries like TensorFlow, PyTorch, Chainer, uh, MatConnet, and, and, and all these other variations. And you know, get the best out of that. No, that's, and that's an excellent point because people um, tend to forget when they're using these tools, they're so easy to use that uh, deep learning is very expensive computationally. Um, so, Terry, how have you found ODSC India so far? Just simply amazing. I mean, what Naresh Jain and, and his team have put up, I, I'm just blown away. And, and this is really no sweet talking or sugar coating because, I, uh, or because I'm very selective about speaking uh, at conferences. Uh, I'm here, I'm meeting peers, the researchers who are also presenting uh, from biomedical engineering and other areas. So these people are just too good. I mean, you know, I know they're throwing really massively dangerous curveballs at me. But th that's exactly what we need. We don't need self-congratulatory conferences. We need challenging ch statements and questions that drive us to improve our systems better. Well said, Terry. And, um, but it must be said, we've got a very good turnout here, and that's thanks to speakers like yourself, which are drawing in the audience. Thank you so much, Terry. Thank, Thank you, you so much, James.